Good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining us today for the 80th anniversary of the remembrance of the Strand Theater Fire. Uh, before I start, I just ask that if you have a cell phone, uh, if you could put it on uh, mute or turn your ringer off, we appreciate it. At this time, I ask everybody to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I'd like to ask Reverend McCoy to come to the podium for the opening prayer. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we know full well that life is precious. And so we give thanks for those who endeavor to protect life and preserve it. We give thanks, O Lord, for the brave men who gave their lives in the night of the Strand Fire. We give thanks for their courage and compassion. We give thanks for their witness to your great love for us and the lives of people, regardless of their status, their race, or circumstance. Lord, for all of these, we give you thanks. May we ourselves be courageous and compassionate in our work, whatever it may be, and serve you well so to honor them. Keep us safe and dutiful in our efforts to protect and preserve life in our day, we pray. Bless the sacrifice of these men and all the women and men who serve you now. Bless our fire and police departments. Bless all of our first responders and their families, public officials and those who support and work with us for the common good and your intention, Lord, that we may prove faithful to your wisdom and your way. All this we ask as we gather here in your holy name. Amen. Thanks, Reverend. I'd like to welcome first the families of those that were lost and injured on March 10th, 1941. I'd also like to welcome uh, the Honorable Mayor Robert Sullivan, Fire Chief Michael Williams, retired Fire Chief Kenneth Galligan, retired Fire Chief Richard Francis, active and retired firefighters of Local 144, neighboring firefighters, and all public safety personnel here today. I also especially like to thank Lieutenant Dave Filer from the Bill Ricker Fire Department for being here today. Also like to welcome fellow city employees and all the residents of the city of Brockton, as well as the elected officials, uh, Wynn Farwell, Councilor at Large was unable to be here and sent his uh, regrets. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Council at Large, Moses Rodriguez, uh, and if I miss somebody, I apologize. Uh, Susan DeCastro from Ward 4, Jack Lally from Ward 6, Councilor Shirley Asak from Ward 7. Uh, I know Senator Mike Brady sent a representative. Also like to thank Representative Claire Cronin, Representative Michelle Dubois, and Representative Jerry Cassidy for being here. Uh, other elected officials that also are in attendance that I recognize today, Greg Hanley from the Plymouth County Commissioner, uh, and John Buckley, the Plymouth County Registrar of Deeds. Um, if I forgot somebody, I apologize, and I'll make it up to you with a payment of under $50. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to invite the Honorable Mayor Robert Sullivan to speak. I also do want to recognize uh, Jared Valenzuela, Plymouth County Commissioner, for being here as well. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Bill Hill and the leadership at, at Local 144. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today, the 80th anniversary of the Strand Theater Fire. Today, we are here to remember the brave 13 firefighters that lost their lives that day prote protecting the residents of the city of Brockton. We will never, ever forget the ultimate sacrifice that they made 
on that day, March 10th, 1941. I'm truly honored today to be surrounded by family members of these heroic men and want you to know that from this day and every day, your loved ones will always, always be deemed as heroes within the city of champions. While we honor this day every single year, today it's really special. It's special because squad A truck that's over there has been missing for 70 years. That was the actual truck that was there 80 years ago battling the infamous fire. And now it's back here in the city of Brockton, it's home. History is so important to our community. Today, we can go over and see and touch Squad A that was on site that terrible day. We can look at the beautiful Strand Memorial Monument. We can go inside and examine the articles and photos that former Chief Ken Galligan puts inside the rotunda each and every year. For generations to come, we must always remember the brave heroic 13. They paid the ultimate sacrifice. We must always remember to learn from the past so we can help guide and shape our future. The return of the apparatus is nothing short of a miracle, and there are a number of people that made it happen. I want to just take a moment, first of all, to thank Bill Recca, firefighter, Dave Filer, who worked diligently, retired Fire Chief Kenny Galligan, to track down Squad A up in New Hampshire and bring it back home. Second, I really want to thank Local 144, the members, the e-board, the officers, and the ex extraordinary leadership of President Bill Hill. Without the collaboration of the firefighters in the union, obtaining the truck wouldn't have happened. They will continue the efforts through restoration and find a, a location here in the city that will be a living monument. Last but certainly never least, I want to just take a moment to really reach out to the, the family of the Brave 13 and just thank you for being here. You're here every year, but this year it's just extra special. I want to thank you as the mayor, but as a Brocktonian. Thank you and God bless you. One last thing I'd like to say is every single day we have wonderful, dedicated public safety employees. They protect and serve every single day. They put their lives on the line. They leave their homes and they do their job and they do it well. But also it's been heightened this year because of the pandemic, because of COVID-19. They really, really are extraordinary members of their respective departments. And I want to thank each and every one of you. So as I conclude, I just want to say thank you very much for being here today. God bless our Brockton firefighters. God bless the Brave 13. God bless the City of Champions. Thank you, be safe, be well. I now would like to invite to the podium Fire Chief Michael Williams. Good morning. As for what took place 80 years ago today here in the city of Brockton, we all know the story. The tragedy that took place literally feet from where we are standing will never be forgotten. The pain the Brockton Fire Department as well as the entire city felt on March 10th, 1941 is still felt today. The compassion that we all feel for those men and their families is still here today. The sense of loss and heartache is still here today. The truck that carried the members of Squad A to the Strand Theater on that very night is here today. Current and past members of this department along with fellow members of other departments, once again, are here today. Our political leaders and Brockton residents are here today. Our fire department and police department honor guards, as well as our firefighters pipes and drums, are here today. I would like to especially thank Mayor Sullivan and Reverend McCoy for being here today. We are all here today to pay respect and to honor the 13 members of the Brockton Fire Department who lost their lives in the Strand Theater 80 years ago. 
May God continue to watch over them and their families, as well as all of you here today. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Williams. On behalf of Firefighters Local 144, I'd like to thank you all for being here today for the 80th anniversary of the Strand Theatre Fire. As we all know, this fire claimed the lives of 13 firefighters and more than two dozen that were severely injured, both physically and mentally. As we do for all our brothers and sisters in the fire service who pay the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty, we take time to remember them we never forget. On this date, each and every year, we remember the 13 who were killed, as the chief stated, and the mayor explained, only feet away. The Strand Theater, for those that don't have a relation to it from the pictures, was actually right over by that grassy knoll. And if I'm incorrect, Chief Galligan will correct me, but it was in that general area. <clears throat> we come here to remember the days following the fire when 13 funerals took place in this city. We come here to remember the children who lost their fathers. We remember the wives who lost their husbands. We not only remember, but we will continue to dedicate ourselves to honor those families left behind after the tragic event. As the, as the years have gone on, there have been many memorials that have been constructed. Inside City Hall, there's a few memorials where the names of those killed are etched in stone. One of those memorials is a, pe is a piece of anthracite that a member of Scranton Local 60 firefighters had carved himself and we used for many years as our memorial. In 2008, we dedicated the memorial you see outside here at City Hall Plaza so that no matter what time of day, what kind of weather, it would stand a reminder to all. Today, there is another connection to the past with the original Squad A that responded to Box 1313, the corner of Main and High Street, directly across from us. The firefighters that climbed aboard the truck that day didn't return back to the station. And those that did carried a heavy, heavy weight. This truck will now be part of the lasting legacy to one of the sacrifices given so, by so many on that day. These memorials I discuss cross multiple generations. Each shares a story of how and why they arrived here. The one common theme they all share is that it was always accomplished by the many. The many who felt the pain and great loss back in 1941 and those since that day who needed a way to show the empathy they have for what was lost in March of 1941. That is why we all gather here each year and recognize this event. We will always remember what happened here on this day in 1941, the dedication to duty, the dedication to one another, and the ultimate sacrifice that was given. I'd like to also ask everybody to remember in your prayers those defending freedom in our armed forces and around the globe. Also remember our brothers and sister firefighters, police officers, and emergency personnel that are serving actively this day. And please remember those that have given the ultimate sacrifice when called upon and to never forget them. At this time, we will now take roll call. Captain John F. Carroll, Ladder Company 3. Lieutenant Raymond A. Mitchell, Engine Company 4. Firefighter Matthew E. McGeary, Ladder Company 3. Firefighter Roy A. McCarrigan, Squad A. Firefighter Dennis P. Murphy, Squad A. Firefighter William J. Murphy, Squad A. Firefighter Daniel C. O'Brien, Squad A. Firefighter George A. Collins, Engine Company 1. Firefighter Frederick F. Kelly, 
Engine Company 1. Firefighter Martin E. Lipper, Engine Company 1. Firefighter Henry E. Sullivan, Engine Company 1. Firefighter John M. McNeil, Ladder Company 1. Firefighter Bartholomew Hurlihy, Ladder Company 1. I'd like to thank the Brockton Fire Department Honor Guard, the Brockton Police Department Honor Guard, Brockton Firefighters, Pipes and Drums today for being here and making this ceremony what it is. I also want to thank all the members of my local for their support. When we, uh, as the mayor stated, when we had the opportunity to purchase this truck, um, and as he stated, uh, Dave Filer had purchased it, and he had that feeling like we all did that it belonged here. Uh, everybody stood together. There wasn't any inclination of not ensuring that it returned. So I want to thank all my members, and I want to thank the community for their support. I want to thank the mayor and chief of the department for their support as well, so that the squad will remain here as a permanent memorial for those in the future to recognize. I also want to thank Chief, Thai Chief Galligan for the display that he puts on every year inside City Hall when we're normally inside. Uh, keeping a history of what happened um, is important. Most of those that have been here for quite some time understand what the loss was and we even have family members who were actually knew the family members who were killed and injured. But as time goes on those memories fade and it's our job to ensure that their memory does not fade. Normally we'd have a collation down at our Union Hall for the breakfast. That's another part of the ceremony that has developed over the years. But due to COVID-19, uh, we won't be having that this year. So I just wanted to let everybody know that unfortunately we won't be um, convening down there. But I'm pretty sure next year we will, and we'll, we'll make up for it. Uh, I do also want to recognize uh, the Squad A will be here for a little while. So for those family members that haven't got a chance to um, uh, go over and, and look at the squad, um, and be with the squad, there'll be time that it'll be here. I just ask that uh, nobody climb on it. It's, um, you know, obviously it's um, in a not perfect shape, but hopefully we'll get it in a better shape in the future. I do want to let you know it does run. Um, according to the history that we've been learning, uh, this truck has been running since um, it was delivered here back in the 20s. So uh, 
you know, kind of like that city of champion things. You, you can't put us down. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to have Reverend McCoy coming up for the closing prayer. And following the closing prayer, we'll do the ceremonial wreath laying. Thank you. Again, let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we give you thanks again for all who serve, those who have sacrificed their lives, for those entrusted to their care. We remember those who gave their lives on the night of the Strand Fire and counted an honor to follow them in a proud legacy of courage and duty fulfilled. May we, each of us in our day and in the work required each day of us, serve you much as they did, with a strength and a dedication matching theirs, again, to honor you. Lord, we pray that you would watch over all the men and women of our armed forces, defend them with your heavenly grace, strengthen them in their trials and temptations, guide them, Lord, and remind them of your abiding presence. We ask this also for those who are first responders, law enforcement, firefighters, public officials, all who seek to do your will for the common good. Bless the families of those who are in support of all of these and more. Bless all those who work to do your will. Again, we ask this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you all for coming. That is the conclusion of the ceremony. Firefighter Haywood, please dismiss uniform personnel.